How's it going guys? We have a past level question for GI path for step one as well as pediatrics for 2CK. I'll tell you exactly the high yield points you need to know, okay, and not waste our fucking time. Very similar questions show up on the NBME exams for step one and step two. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 12-month-old girl. She has a two-week history of increased bowel motions. Uh, these began after she got sick with a quote-unquote stomach bug. She was started on table foods at age six months. Until that time, she was exclusively breastfed. MCV 90 femtoliters, normal range 80 to 100. Hemoglobin 14 grams per deciliter, normal range should be 13 to 17.5 ish in pediatrics. Which of the following is most likely the explanation for these findings? Before I even hop into the answer choices, I just want to comment on the this uh, detail that she was exclusively breastfed until six months of age. Uh, for pediatrics, you should be aware that if a child is not exclusively breastfed until at least six months of age, that is a risk factor for milk protein allergy, which can present as blood in the stool with formula, okay? Obviously unrelated to this question, but it's just something we tend to ask in pediatrics if there's some sort of gastrointestinal issue. So uh, let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, bacterial malabsorption, wrong answer. I mean, this is a very generic answer, okay? If we were to think of uh, some sort of pathogen that could cause malabsorption, truthfully, it's typically Giardia, which is a protozoan. Uh, bacterial infections of the gut, e.g. Shigella, Salmonella, etc., <clears throat> they don't classically cause malabsorption. They tend to be associated with dysentery, okay, which is just a um, mucoid or bloody stool, all right? Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, deficiency of brush water disaccharitis is the correct answer, okay? So what you need to know here is that uh, children who have gastroenteritis can get a transient lactose intolerance due to slothing of the tips of the villi. Okay, so you get a transient uh, lactase deficiency, which it, that, that enzyme is located at the brush border. If you do a biopsy in, in lactose intolerance, whether it's idiopathic slash genetic or whether it's transient, as in this case, you're going to see a normal, just normal intestinal villi. There's no abnormalities, okay? In contrast, uh, if we had flattening of the intestinal villi, this would should be celiac disease. Of course, wrong answer here. You should be aware that they can often get iron deficiency anemia, which we don't have here. Now, this is a very, very high yield finding because you'll get questions for step one and step two that could be pretty vague overall. <clears throat> and if they tell you MCV is low, hemoglobin is low, and or fer ferritin iron, you should be thinking celiac disease, okay? Iron absorbed in the duodenum, and of course we have flattening of the villi, so iron deficiency high yield for celiac. And I should also mention d test. Uh, what you should know for that is it's a monosaccharide that uh, does not require any type of enzyme for absorption. If you have abnormal intestinal lining, then you'll have an abnormal uh, uh, xylose, dexylose test. So in lactose intolerance, our structural lining of the intestines is intact. So we would have a normal dexylose test. We'd also have a normal dexylose test for uh, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which could be celiac disease, as well as chronic pancreatitis, like an alcoholism or pancreatectomy. Flatting the intestinal villi for celiac, as well as Crohn disease, you will have an abnormal dexylose test on eosomily anatomic lining abnormality. Let's just continue whipping through non-caseating non granulomatous inflammation is going to be Crohn disease, okay? So you need to know in the histo for Crohn, uh, we get non-caseating granulomas, okay? Obviously, you get non-caseating granulomas in other conditions, e.g. sarcoidosis uh, for the lungs. Uh, but long discussion, uh, <clears throat> but Crohn disease uh, non casein granulomas. In this case, it's the wrong fucking answer. E, transient neuropathy of hypogastric nerves, wrong answer. So this is where we get into a bit of nitpicky stuff. You should know hypogastric nerves are sympathetic and the pelvic splanchnic nerves are parasympathetic. So pelvic splanchnic nerves, parasympathetic to the gut, pro-peristalsis. If you have neuropathy of pelvic splanchnic nerves, such as in diabetes, you will get constipation. If in contrast, you have neuropathy to the hypogastric nerves, sympathetic, which are anti-peristalsis, you would get diarrhea. Okay, so this kid does have diarrhea, and you could, you know, if we had a 58-year-old with advanced diabetes 
who had diarrhea, neuropathy of the hypogastric nerves is correct. I've seen this stuff for GI, okay? So I'm staying concise for the point of this YouTube clip. Uh, your point of consolidation here is just if you get an otherwise vague vignette for lactose intolerance for celiac, I want you to know that in lactose intolerance, you can have a gastroenteritis, a viral infection that can lead to a transient lactose intolerance. You're going to have a normal biopsy, celiac disease, iron deficiency anemia, exceedingly high yield, flattening of the intestinal billy. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.